All right, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at the 2025 Adobe Camera Raw updates. Now, because Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw are essentially the same program, usually the updates are basically the same. Now, there is one exception with Adobe Camera Raw, and I'll show it to you. But you should be able to apply what you learn here in the Adobe Camera Raw updates to the Lightroom updates. So let's dive in and take a look and see what's new. So I'm not a huge fan of the 2025 updates. A lot of it has to do with the AI, and I think we're getting sort of an overkill of the AI. They're putting stuff in before it's not ready. If you have tried to use Firefly to generate an image, horrible, like absolutely horrible. The free one on Bing is so much better than the Adobe Firefly option. Not a huge fan of it at this moment. I'm sure it will finally catch up at one point and be useful, but I think we're just skirting that a lot of the stuff is here, but it's not really functional yet. So let's go ahead and take a look at the few things that are new. Let's come on over to the remove tool. And so we're gonna click on the remove tool and you will notice that we have by default use generative AI. And we also have something new now and it's called detect objects. So if you take a look at this in Photoshop, which also got a very similar update, the two things that it's auto detecting are power lines and people. So the way this one works, however, is you circle it. So what I will do is on detect objects and let's say that, well, I like this boat, maybe I don't want this boat. So I essentially will circle the ship and what Photoshop will do is try to detect that there's an object there. If it does, it will sort of make a selection. If it doesn't, it just kind of makes this broad selection. So let's go ahead and hit Command Z and try to do this a little bit better. So we'll come in here and say, hey, it's just this little thing right in here. We want you to find it. I want you to detect this object and remove it. It detected exactly where I drew around. So let's come in here. I can go ahead and hit remove. Inside of Adobe Camera Raw, the removal tool generally does a pretty good job of removing items. I'm not a fan of ever using any of the remove or cloning tools inside of Adobe Camera Raw. I tend to want to do this inside of Photoshop because I can make it non-destructive and I can turn it on and off. All right, so if we come down here and take a look, we can see, yeah, it didn't even remove the item and actually generated a new item and replaced it. So if we look over here at the fill, it says generative remove, which it didn't do. It removed it, but it filled it in with something else, which is not what I wanted. So we could try the remove and we can give it a second and it can work its magic. And yeah, it sort of removed it and didn't do such a great job. Actually, it did a horrible job. It brought the water up here. It wasn't able to create it. So I think if we did something like this in Photoshop, what we would see would be a whole lot better. So let's go ahead and delete that because we don't want to do it. And yeah, that didn't work so great. Okay, so let's come on in to the crop tool. So we're going to click on this image. And look, this is something that we've basically had in Photoshop for a really long time. And they're just finally now adding it into Adobe Camera Raw. Once again, I never crop in Adobe Camera Raw because I want to edit and tone and adjust my image before I size and crop any photo. And that has to do with not only Adobe Camera Raw, but in Photoshop. When I go to Photoshop, unless I need to level something out and I'm doing a generative expand, I don't crop my image because I want to tone it. I want to have everything there. And then I crop in size after I'm done with adjusting that image. The way this works is we'll click on the crop tool. And normally your crop fills out your whole image. We're just going to say blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we know about it. And you can see this building here is a little crooked. So we're going to rotate this so it's straight. And when we do that, it keeps the image inside the bounding area of the box. So it's not going outside and creating translucency. However, if I come on up here and I click on where it says enable expand, I'm gonna click that little box. And now what it's going to do is let me expand out and create translucency. So if I do that, I'm getting these translucent areas in the image where I'm expanding it 
and we don't have any image data. And this is where the generative expand comes into effect. It's going to recreate that area. In Photoshop, we have the content aware expand and generative AI expand. So we can come over here and we can hit generate. And basically it's going to apply that crop and try to fill in those areas as best of its can. So let's go ahead and take the zoom tool and we're gonna zoom in right here. And you can see it's done a pretty good job in certain areas, but it's kind of done some funky little things where it's missed some areas. So in general, this seems to do a pretty good job, especially when you run into areas where it's really simple and there's not a lot of texture and detail. Did it work? Yep, it looked pretty good. We have different variations that we could look at. So if we wanted to try different variations, I'm gonna hit Command Zero to zoom out, but you could kind of come in here and go through the different variations and see if you like those better. That one seems to maybe be working better. One's not very good, so we'll go back to two, and I could say, and boom, just like that, we've got that crop with that new expanded area. All right, so let's come on up here to this image. And this is where we're really starting to get into features that I think are actually beneficial. And this feature that I'm gonna show you now is something that's only available in Adobe Camera Raw, not Lightroom. Why, I have no idea. But if we come on up and we're gonna go back to the basic panel. And we've always had profiles and I have loaded in the Adobe profile. So if this was the landscape, we could always slide down to the landscape. And this gives you basically a different type of starting point, depending on the type of image that you have. So in this case, we have a landscape. And basically what the landscape profile does is it increases color saturation and contrast. However, in an image like this, where it's really dark and needs to be opened up here, and highlights need to be held, it's not super helpful because if you increase your contrast, it makes it more difficult to open this area up or brighten it up if you want. So going into that kind of harsh contrast isn't helpful. But now we have a beta and it's called Adaptive Adobe. And so if we do this, we're gonna give it a second, it's gonna think about it and you can see, wow, what it tries to do is kind of adjust or give you a better starting point. And in this circumstance, I think it just went a little overboard. And one of the cool things is we have a slider, so we can slide that back down. You can see I'm moving that histogram and shifting it from being really bright to of dark. Now, it brightened this area up a little bit too much. And if you ever have anything in Adobe Camera Raw or any part of a program, where it makes one area look much better, but it doesn't really help the other area, stop, don't do it, and do this as a selective adjustment. But in this case, it's not too bad, so we can come down here and we can adjust that. And you can see that this is a much better image. We haven't blown this out, so I can now go in and make that selective adjustment here. This is the adaptive presets. So let's come on over here to a portrait and see how it works on a portrait. So if we take a look at this image, so this is a pretty good exposure, maybe a little bit dark, and this is something I could tweak a little bit, but we have nice smooth tonal gradations. And if we come up here and try the new adaptive preset, what we can see is it's really increasing the highlight values and the contrast of this image. Probably not the best effect for a subject or a person. So I think I might stay away from it on people but if we were to come over here and try it in this image, I think it would probably work pretty good. We just need to adjust it because it's really trying to accentuate the shadow areas and the highlight areas of our image. That is the new adaptive preset. And I think this is just in beta, it's gonna get better and this is gonna be pretty helpful. So the last thing that we have here, and we will switch on up to this image, and this image does not have a lot of noise, but I'm gonna show you how this works. So the way this would work is you would come into the three dots, you would click this, and then you would drop down to enhance. Mine is gone, and the reason mine is gone is because I've told 
Photoshop to work differently. So if I come up to the settings up here in Adobe Camera Raw and click on this, and I drop down to technology previews, I've clicked this little box that says new AI features and settings panel. All right, you wanna tick that box, you wanna hit OK, and then you need to restart Photoshop because it won't apply it just by ticking the box. But since I've done that, it has eliminated that. And now when I come into the detail panel, we have the denoise right here. And so when I click on denoise, it's gonna create that preview. It's not creating a new document, it's just applying that to the preview that we see. So you can see right here, we didn't have a new document created, it's just applied the denoise. We still have the ability, and this is cool because you can slide this and see with the different variations adjusting the amount of the noise. Basically, I'm much happier with that option of using denoise and not just duplicating it for no reason so we don't have to get that extra DNG. And that's basically everything that's new inside of Adobe Camera Raw 2025. If this video helpful and could give it a thumbs up, that would be great. Don't forget to subscribe and have an absolutely wonderful day.